So people bring me pottery all the time, and a lot of times they go, well, how do you know A, what it is, and B, what it is worth? Well, what it is, is I want to know if it's made by hand, another a pinch and coil method, or if it's greenware. This makes a huge difference for value, because greenware is basically a molded pot. They molded the pot, and it can be Native American made in the sense that a Native American or Indian might have painted it or sanded it, but it's really not what I consider to be handmade. Handmade to me means that they've actually got the clay, they clean the clay, they pinch and coil method to, the, to make the pot, and they hand polish and hand polish and paint the pot. In the old times, it would always be done in an outdoor kiln, but now really a lot of the, the artists are using a fire kiln because they, when they have this, then the pots don't break. If you're outside and using a, a kiln that is uh, with the environment, it's, it becomes a more difficult situation. I will say that the potters that do do that are you know, usually some of the very best potters and their prices are going to be according to using those kind of methods. So that's one of the things. Is it handmade? Is it pinch and coil or is it greenware? Greenware, not interested in. Hand coil, I am. Now with regards to historic pottery and even contemporary pottery, we want to look for condition. Condition is very important. It's okay to have a few things wrong with it, but we need to take some things into consideration. How old is the pot? So if it's a turn of the century or earlier pot and it's got a few scratches or chips, I can live with that. But if it's a 1960 Maria Martinez, it better be in very good condition. I don't want to see things like water damage, which is not uncommon. You'll see those in Maria Martinez's pots because they would use flowers in them and the humidity would cause the slip or the outer surface to, to raise up. So if it's a Maria Martinez, I want to see it in as good a condition as possible. But I do understand if it's an early pot from the 19, say, 40s and before, it's going to have a few scuffs and problems. Other things you want to look for are chips. Uh, little chips are not a problem. Uh, even good restoration is not an issue for me as long as it was done well. You have some scratches. If they're small, that's not a big deal. And you can have uh, stress line fractures or firing cracks. Sometimes when they're firing, they had a crack. And this has been there since the day the pot's made. I do take it into consideration as far as condition and for price. I also take it into consideration when I'm going to send a pot. I don't ever want to send a pot if it hasn't been stabilized. That means that the pot has a crack, but we want to put a little glue in it so it won't vibrate and break. You can also have... Uh, cracks on the bottom of the pot. This is not uncommon, but if, if it does, then it should be included into the cost of the pot. One of the other things you see, especially at Acoma, is spalling. Spalling is when little chips come off of the pot. This is generally done because of the temper. The temper is what keeps the pot from breaking, and if the moisture is still held into the pot over time as it dries, then they can get little pop-outs. This is very common in Acoma in the 60s, and some of the best potters, Marie Zicchino and Lucy Lewis, some of her pots have lots of spalling. This does affect the price, and you want to take this into consideration. So overall, the things you want to realize when you're evaluating a Pueblo pot is, one, is it handmade? And two, what's the condition? Small things aren't a big deal if it's early on, if it's later, they should be pretty pristine condition. You can look at this video and see some of the examples I've shown that relate to what I'm looking for when I look at Pueblo Pottery to evaluate and what you should look for too.